time for this week's What's God Got to Do With It panel, where we bring together different religions to talk about one topic. This week, we're asking, what's God got to do with climate change? There's been a lot of, in the news about the fires in the Amazon, which this year increased by 84%. We've also seen lots of increasing temperatures across the globe, which are going to affect religious gatherings like Hajj. But what does religion actually say about climate change? And are religions and religious groups doing enough for and against climate change, I mean. Well, with me to discuss this, I've got Sanjay Gohil, who's a Hindu with the Hare Krishna Temple. We've also got Babinda Korana, who's a Sikh, and also someone who volunteers with the Chardikala Turban Academy as well. How are we both? Yeah, very well, very well. How are you? <laughs> good, I'm good as well. I'm excited for this. Um, yeah, let's just chat a little bit about this, if you, if, if you don't mind. I mean, climate change, uh, is this something that Sikhs are aware of, something that Sikhs are doing much about, Babinda? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, climate change for uh, Sikhs is, is something that is a duty of a Sikh to have a fight for mm-hmm. climate uh, fight climate change and do what they can to um, not damage the creation. So, I mean, for, for us, you know, our gurus teach us that um, this earth is, you know, it's all God's creation. Mm. And, and we have a duty to, you know, we're here for a, a momentary time, period of time, years. We should be protecting protecting it and, and not damaging it while we're here. What about for uh, so, what about for, for yourselves and for Hindus? What, what is the uh, the thought process here? Are they conscious of <laughs> climate change? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think I think it, it's it's it backs Babindra's uh, point there. Definitely that this is God's planet. This is God's creation and God's property. And unfortunately, man and acu- mankind is not using resources in a sustainable way. And we kind of think that we own planet Earth and with that mentality, we kind of use and abuse planet Earth and that's a shame. Mm, it is, isn't it? But um, do you think people from a religious background and, you know, religious institutions are doing enough to promote conservation and, and helping the climate? And, and, you know, this isn't... I'm not just mm. asking you and then asking you, just, you know, just yeah. have a little conversation here. Feel free to chip in as well. But in the, yeah, Sanj? Yeah, so I think... I think for the Hare Krishnas, we believe that mm. as everything is God's property, it's our duty to live in an ahimsa way, meaning in a peaceful way. So with that comes a less materialistic lifestyle, less consumerism. So it's more simple living and high thinking. Um, our consciousness is deep. We can think in, on a really spiritual level. But that, that doesn't mean we uh, become very materialistic and we don't have so much demands um, for things, for stuff, you mm. know. Um, so through education, we try and teach a less materi- materialistic lifestyle. And if people adopt a less materialistic lifestyle, then naturally your carbon footprint's going to drop considerably. What would you say to So that? I think, yeah, there's a key thing around um, compassion and bringing compassion back into to everybody. And that's what, like for a Sikh faith, that, that's one of the foundations that we have is having compassion. Compassion for ourselves, our people around us and all organisms that God has created and nature. And with, when we have compassion, then we will bring righteousness into it and we will do the right things. And, and it's not about, like, so human nature will always want more. Mm. And it's more about... Uh, for Sikhi, they're saying us to limit your wants. So again, yeah, yeah, like what yeah. you're saying, is yeah. it's actually not wanting, asking yourself, do I need this or do I want this? And mm. if you don't need it, you know, just you know, limit your wants. In practice, does that actually happen? Would you say? Um, yeah, I mean, as I say, if you bring if you bring the faith into your life, um, it's it's all a kind of a cycle and a chain of, of that positivity. So you you start with you know be, becoming more God conscious and 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 God loving, and with that then you will love His creation, and then you'll you'll develop compassion for for His creation, and then with the compassion you don't want to then you don't want to damage it, and and that will bring about the righteousness to do and the determination to do the right thing, and those are all the foundations that our faith actually gives us if we read our scriptures, followed what our gurus. She said. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, if we bring it into our lives, everyday mm. lives, these simple things, we can, we can fight it all together. Yeah. 11 minutes past 12 here on The Big Debate. Uh, I want to know your thoughts at home on this as well. Um, not necessarily just your views on climate change. I'm always keen to read out your views. 81869 to text or, or WhatsApp 07920 500 200. 
But also, what are you, what are people around you doing? What are your religious institutions, your religious groups, maybe your local mosques or your gurdwaras or your temples? What are you doing together to to promote uh, you know, a more healthy, uh, environmentally friendly lifestyle? Is that changing at all? 81869. I want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, would uh, Sanjay, what were you saying was really interesting about the fact that you know you think deeply about spiritual issues. Mm, mm. Um, so then, in that case, how are natural disasters viewed? It's a very, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting topic. I find it very fascinating. So, through we believe in karma, so every action has a reaction, and what the Hare Krishnas really try and do is live in a live an ahimsa lifestyle, a peaceful lifestyle. For example, when we we are through through a sort of like a vegetarian sort of lifestyle and an ethos, that means we're not involved in the killing of animals and for the for the pleasure of our tongue, right? For taste. No. Um but because on an industrial scale, so much is ki- so much killing is happening through slaughterhouses throughout the world, wars, um, various other sort of sinful killing acts. If you're killing on a mass level, there is that that's that's a big action, and therefore naturally you're going to have a big reaction coming, whether it's immediately, soon after, could be a few years down the line, but world wars, natural disasters like your tsunamis and various other things happen, we believe because of karma. We we have various negative actions will lead to various negative reactions. And therefore what we try and do is have that compassion as Papindra was saying, that actually animals shouldn't be killed for just for the scent, for the pleasure of our stomach, right? We have to live in a peaceful way where we're eating um, simple foods that aren't living, simple like plant-based foods. And through that, we are reducing our negative karma happening. See, it's interesting, yeah, you talk about karma because mm. that will be... You know, one way of looking at it, and clearly a way you're taught um, to to look mm-hmm. at it as well. And, and and I can see where you come from there. There have been also, you know, other looks at you know the official way that science looks at it is mm-hmm. that the Earth's climate is simply warming, and a, and a lot of that is to do basically with humans. It's to do with you know how much meat we're eating. It's mm-hmm. to do with uh, you know what we're doing to the planet, the amount of pollution in there as well. That those are scientific. Um, well, if, theories but also facts really it is a fact that climate change is happening how can you marry those two schools of thought so have a think about this you you are let's say for example you have got a forest and you chop down that forest and create farmland to farm some cows Mm -hmm. right and your intention is to farm these cows to butcher them and sell them right that is your actions and in those actions of removing all of those trees those trees should be photosynthesizing and absorbing the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. And the reaction from that is more car- carbon dioxide within the atmosphere. And then therefore, the global temperature shall increase. So that is your reaction. Does that, does that sort of no, make sense? It does. I want to know other people's thoughts to this out there as well. Yeah. Because at a simplistic level, when you talk about it like that, mm. they're one and the same. They're two sides of the same coin. Exactly, exactly. Bovinda, what do you think about that? Um, so yeah, so from our perspective, we th- we kind of feel that we're in this age of Galjug, which is this that age of dark, uh, sort mm. of darkness and spiritual ignorance. So and then we've lost sight of that compassion, and as and as a result, we, you know, we're we're not protecting all of these things. So we're doing these things. We're making compromises with mm-hmm. nature for for economic and business growth and for um, for profit. Um, but we should. We need to go back to you know not not doing that because we are impacting the air. We're we're, com- we're contaminating the air and and water, and we're pol- we're cre- creating more pollution and and damaging the land. And we're also you know creating in- great inequality and and climate change. So all of these mm. are 
these natural disasters that are happening is probably Mother Nature telling us that mm. we are tampering with it too much and we need to stop. Mm. Mother Nature is telling us that, yeah. but in our temples, in our Godvaras... In our scriptures, our scriptures, we talk sure, about... Sure, sure, in the script... have talked about that I, I, I get 500 that. plus years ago. Sure, yeah. 500 plus years ago. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, in the here and now, in 2019, yeah. are these issues being talked about in relation to religion, in our Godvaras here, in our mosques here, for anyone out there listening from an Islamic perspective, you know, uh, and, and, and for yourself as well, Sanjay, you know, are these being talked about yes. and from an environmental thought as well? Yeah, so within the Hare Krishna community, both in uh, London at Bhakti Vedanta Manor, but also on a global um, scale within the Hare Krishna movement, we are actively trying to... Our founder, Srila Prabhupada, wanted farm communities where they are self-sustainable, um, where vegetables are grown, where cows are protected and milk is taken from the cows and they're given a sanctuary life th for their entire lives. Um, the idea w from that was we have no need to be quite, to increase our level of consumerism. We are living off the land in a very simplistic way. It's almost like old school Vedic agriculture. Mm. Um, so our founder, Srila Prabhupada, wanted that on a sort of a global scale. And it's beautiful to see that actually we have quite, we have many, many farm communities um, all around the world that are living in a sustainable way. While it's not 100% sustainable, but it's a lot more sustainable than other ways of life. And in our, you know, in our Gurdwaras, is yeah. this something that is, you know, being talked about? Yeah, so in our Gurdwaras, they are doing lots of positive steps that um, are always doing positive steps to um, do, reduce that carbon footprint. So we, you know, our langar, which is served mm. all day, every day through globally, um, is, you know, majority, it's all on uh you know we use steel plates and and um cups and and cutlery and stuff so and and it's all part of the server the selfless service to be you know volunteers come and wash that so it's all part of that whole connection and mm. you know we're not we're, we've reduced we don't have any disposable waste in that sense you know there's there is management around the the food wastage and all that they have things in place there they're using led more eco-friendly lighting um we had shepherd's bush goodware that's the, mm. the oldest goodware in the uk yes. and they got revamped last year and they you know they've got solar panel, solar panel, solar panels up there producing most more than ninety five percent of their energy. They're they're using the LED lighting, um, yeah. So they and, and all the other godwaras are doing the same thing. But are they Our, talked about? Are these issues actually talked about in 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 the godwaras? You know, this is a place where you can get the message out there. It's talked to. It's talked about through our scriptures. So teaching us I, what yeah, our gurus in are the saying, script, yeah. saying change your life. But then to, you've said that you know in the scriptures. But let's be honest: how many people actually read the scriptures verbatim? So we also have gatha and mm -hmm. gatha that happens of those that explain to us um, about our actions and explain to us and try to connect us back to the basics again. Mm -hmm. To say, you know, do limit your wants and 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 see what you're doing. See whatever you're doing has a consequence. Mm. And, and and in terms of what you said about the meat and eating it, it was also asking your question question, whatever I'm putting into my body, because I'm saying God it's God's yeah. lights in all of us. Yeah, yeah. If whatever I'm putting in my body is that actually or ethically sourced, do I know it's ethically sourced and probably sourced? I mean or, it's not or, just meat, or should, but it's, or should it's we be eating or should well. we be eating meat at all? But it's it's anything, right? Vegetables, meat, you don't eat with vegetables. People are genetically modifying well, well, it. Hang on, no, no, the, there's, a dif there's, there's a difference, isn't there? But you need to see what. I mean, there's a difference between done. eating vegetables and eating meat. In fact, meat yeah. is, you know, the biggest source of, of, of what well, has the heaviest carbon footprint out there. Do you think Sikhs would ever um, think about actually not eating meat? So, as a, a, a initiated Sikh, so someone mm -hmm. who's Amratari, you know, it's in our red Maria, they're not to, you know, so not to eat anything that is ritually slaughtered, mm. uh, sacrificed in that way. Um, so, yeah, so when any of our gurdwaras don't don't serve meat because it's about serving a nutritious hot meal and that's always vegetarian. So, yeah, so we mostly do promote um, eating vegetarian food, but we do have to look at that, the chain of the, like, the chain of the food that we're actually eating as well, that it's all done ethically and, and that's what we're putting in our this? body. Yeah, I mean, it's... So within within ISKCON and within the Hare Krishna movement, we have an entire well, we have a governing body that looks after the Hare Krishna movement mm. globally, and one of those departments is um, the Ministry for Agriculture and Cow Protection. Um, now, this team oversees the entire global Hare Krishna movement in the sense of um, 
agriculture, sustainable agriculture and beginning and running and sort of uh, adapting cow protection programs based on farms um, that are available to us. And with that, the idea of cow protection and sustainable agriculture is that we we are human bodies and we need food to sustain ourselves. Um, we can't eat like stones and pebbles, right? So we need some sort of uh, nutrition. And we say that plants is the best way forward for that. It's the only way forward for mm-hmm. um, sustaining ourselves. Everything else is is not for us to eat. It's only for us to care for. Um, and when when why Hare Krishna speaks so much about cows is that it's this, cow cow in our scriptures is said to be our mother. Mm. And therefore, if you are on an industrial scale, mass scale, internationally, you're killing cows in slaughterhouses. That is a really, really negative action. That is um, yes, very. It causes a, a very, very negative reaction. So peace and prosperity and progress in society cannot happen if um, our that, mothers and fathers are cons- consistently being slaughtered. And I understand where you come from with that, but it's not just about cows. Is it? I mean, water, the River Ganges mm-hmm. in in India, you know, mm-hmm. considered sacred, but it's also one of the most polluted rivers in the world as well. First of all, why do you think that is? Because, it, it, you know, it's something that's used to wash. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a life source, but also, sadly to say, it's a little bit of a dumping ground as well. It is, it is. And and as Babindra was saying, that perhaps we are li- we are living in the age of Kali Yuga, meaning the, the age of ignorance. And we're, we're sort of um, not understanding that our actions have consequences. Um the Ganges is an extremely uh, sacred river, extremely sacred, and it's it's the life source for so many um, villages along its line. In some places, what happens is people will dump rubbish, and once they've dumped it, it's not their problem, right? Mm. But then a few miles down the line, it becomes somebody else's problem. And that attitude is not just for rivers. That's a, that's a standard attitude within humans now. We have a problem, we pass it on, and it's yeah. not our problem. So that's both in agriculture it's, it's about like it's um everyday life in everyday yeah. life yeah 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 so it's not just like yeah it's it's sort yeah. of ingrained in our everyday um society which, which is a shame isn't it let's, yeah. let's let's read a message out saying hello i'm hindu we believe earth is our mother we should take care of it i'm teaching mm. this to my kids to follow as well we use more public transport to support nice. which is great very good i'd argue you know public transport is fantastic to use if it's there available for a lot mm. of people it's either not available mm. or it's more expensive to use than cars as well, which, mm. which is part of the issue as well, right? Yeah, but Binda, what would you say, though, about the older generation? Do you think that the older generation needs more educating about climate change? We've seen a lot of, you know, we had Greta Thunberg, you know, mm. the, the 16-year-old who's, you know, became like this, you know, the poster girl for climate change. Um, and, you know, we've seen that a lot of young people, particularly on this programme, are very, very wary of what's going on. Do you think that care... Is there for the older generation as well? Um, I, I mean, I think everybody, every individual knows that, you know, we have to do something. Can everybody, I mean, as I said, we all need to, we all know that we have to not tamper with Mother Nature. We have to be conscious about what we're doing. So I mm. think it is in everybody, ingrained in everybody's mind. Um, it, it's just we have to all come collectively together or, and each one of us do something that makes the difference. It's not just one person's problem, but it's it's across us all, all communities, all organisations, all leaders to come together to make those changes. We've got to not want the things that are you know we're creating this mm-hmm. so the, dem- the demand for, and then there's organizations doing the supply and then they're making doing further advancements because yeah. they think there's a need and it's it's profit so let's talk to, to change Din- whole chain let's talk to dinesh who's got in touch from scotland dinesh how are you Hi. i'm fine thank you very much so what are your thoughts on this do you think that there are certain religions that could be doing more I think so. I mean, there are quite a few rituals that uh, we follow in uh, our religions, which uh, I believe are actually causing um, more problems with the pollution and uh, environmental change. I mean, your Hare Krishna follower talked about uh, things which obviously, as a vegetarian, you say that uh, we are not killing animals. But when you talk about cow protection, uh, the global warming is not caused by killing the cows. It's caused by 
the cow horses themselves, uh, you know, grazing and producing methane gas. And also rituals like the hovan that we do, you know, whenever there's a housewarming party or any occasion at home, we always used to, I'm a born Hindu, though I don't now, I'm not a practicing Hindu now. Uh, but at home, we always had these uh, hovens for any occasion. And you burn, you know, uh, a very, very high uh, power sort of... Uh, mm, there is a lot of wastage, that. isn't there? And a lot it of... Um, waste mm. and, and also the ritual of, you know, burning the the remains and, and putting the, the ashes into the Ganges. I find that very, very... Uh, that practice, you know, it, it should change. My father passed away this year, and uh, I made sure that we don't do that. Mm. It, it, there was a lot of resistance from the priest and my other family members. Okay. Uh, okay. But I said we should be, you know, doing these things as a religion rather than saying, you know, I don't believe in religions. That's why I'm doing it. Dinesh, thank you for that. We're nearly out of time. So let's get a response. From yeah. I, and I think, I think Dinesh, for, I want to just say two things. Firstly, well, three things. Firstly, I'm sorry, your father passed away um, recently um, about the cows. The cows are creating various um, gases that causes global warming, but we as a human race has decided to eat cows on a mass scale. So therefore we farm so many cows, we mass produce cows, and then that of course will lead to um, the various gases being produced by the cows. But the idea is not the cows themselves, it's our taste for cows, and therefore we have created an excessive amount of cows for the purpose of eating them. The idea really in terms of old school Vedic agriculture is you have one or two cows per household and that is your cow for milk and then you look after that cow until it naturally passes away and if it's a boy, it's a male, it will plough the land as a bull, as a bullock or a, as an oxen or a, or a, an, an intact bull. Um, I understand that. And then, and and the next thing is you you mentioned about the hovens and the rituals, the, the idea of burning, that is a very small scale thing. You need to uh, we need to appreciate that humans have a mass desire to cut trees down, one for farming, but two to produce mm. excessive amounts of paper and various other furnitures and anything else. But that that's happening on a mass scale. The small scale of taking wood to burn for a ritualistic ceremony is not causing the problem. It's okay. the mass consumerism, which is... Thank it you. is contributing to it, whether it's small or, or large. Mm. If, we can, if we can change those practices... Uh, like what I did for Dinesh, my Dinesh, thank you very much for your call, for your call, getting in touch. I'm not trying to cut you off, but we are now out of time. Thank you very much for getting involved, though. Thank you also to my guest today, Sanjay, and to Babinda as well. I just want to finish with this message saying, I'm from the Punjab. Please ask why the land in Punjab has been over-farmed and there are water table issues and the land's been severely damaged. Religion didn't prevent this. Uh, that's all we've got time for today.